we're going to talk about here on this uh, RV fire that you had. Tell, tell, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We've got some pictures here that uh, you gave me of the fire. We don't really have too much video. There's a few little video clips in, yeah. but the main thing is we want to talk about what happened. And this was a, a Allegro bus. Allegro, 42 foot. Allegro. 42 Tiffin Allegro bus. Yes. And what year was it? It's a 2008. 2008. Yeah. And you, how many thousand miles do you have? 54,000. 54,000. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't that bring tears to you guys? Yes, it does. Yeah. Because should have went 200,000 easy. Um, you were going to Charleston, South Carolina for a 4th of July retreat with your grandchildren. Yeah, three of my grandchildren. You had three grandchildren yep. in the bus with you. Yeah. And um, yeah. you were headed uh, toward... Past Macon, I think you were on I-16. I-16. We were around exit 31 or 32 when the fire started. Okay. And then how did you know that you had a fire? Uh, deputy Sheriff come running up beside us with his siren low waving at us when I looked over. And then when I looked over, I saw smoke all behind me. But you didn't have any sirens or alarms going up inside the RV? No. Okay. Um, and then you got out. Did you... Then yeah. you said you had to go back in and get something. Well, I left a bunch of cash laying in there. Well, you don't want to leave that in the yeah, fire, right? Yeah, and the kids had to run back and get their iPads and well, iPhones and stuff like that. We grabbed right out the front seats. And y'all well, got out safely, so nobody was hurt. Yeah, including well, first, including the fire department, nobody was hurt in that. Well, the police, well, everybody stopped on the interstate. They blocked the, the sheriff's department. They were running a speed check, uh, radar out there, so they all stopped, come up and blocked off the road. So Interstate 16 was blocked off? Yeah, it was shut down. East and west? No, no, just on our side going towards Savannah. Okay. For a while. I mean, once the fire truck out there started putting it out, they let traffic come back and start on the left side off on emergency. Okay. Lane over. So they did shut down Interstate 16. Yeah. For, for, for a short, one side, yeah. Oh, yeah, for a short while. Yeah. Until they got the fire basically under control. Yeah, until they, until they got there and started putting water on it, it was yeah. pretty much shut down. And... Uh, Wow, and then I guess how long did it take them to? How long did it take to put the fire out? About an hour. An hour. About an hour. And because it kept blazing up on the inside and in well, different spots in there. Blazing. Okay, all right. And uh, so that was finished, and then they had to. You had to have the RV towed off. Yeah. Um, so you had to have a tow truck come in, and did you say they put the uh, RV up on a flatbed trailer? Yeah, they trailer? loaded it on a low bore trailer so they could just wreck or pushed it up on there, and then uh, they drove it to back to a storage yard. Okay. In Macon. Okay. And then you had insurance on it. Well, yeah, some. You had some, not <laughs> yeah. what you expected, not what right? we thought. Yeah. How'd, how'd that happen? Well, our insurance lady that we deal with for years called and said, we're gonna save you some money. Saved us about $1,000. We thought she was saving us a thousand dollars, right? Because she threw a premium of like fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars a year. We just ate that up. So right. we had it insured for two hundred fifty thousand, right? Well, when the paperwork was done, we paid our payment and everything. We never checked the policy, you know, right. which most of us never do. I never checked it because you know we knew what we had before the light, all these few years before, so. When he called me, when I called him and reported the fire, they said, well, you have coverage 150 I said, no, we got 250 They said, oh, no, we dropped it to 150 So. So you took a $100,000 haircut? I took right a $100,000 $100, lick right there, just the end of it. Right. Wow. Thank goodness it was all paid for, but still, it's a depressing situation. But not only that, let's talk a little bit about what you were doing in preparation for your trip. Because you hadn't been in this RV for a while. When yeah. was the last time you were out, you and Jan out in? It had probably been two years. You know, I'd take it down the road, run it around, just, you know, keep everything lubricated in it and cranked up, running, keep everything working. But I had to put all new Michelin tires on it. Wasn't that about $1,000 a piece? Yeah, and that was, that was eight, eight tires. Yeah, uh, eight tires. Yeah. Then I had to, and two days before we left, I put uh, four new batteries in it. I had to put a new air shock on the right pack uh, steering side because it had a leak in it, so I fixed that. You, you had a shop that did that right before yeah, you left? Shop, yeah, They kind of worked you closed. in because nobody yeah. had yeah. availability, right? Yeah, nobody. They well, our paper? shop, our own shop was closed. Yeah. For the holidays, so I hired these guys to do it. So you, you had uh, batteries, tires, and a, a, a shock. And I'd, had, I'd had some uh, 
the front end repainted where some flaked off on it, and I had our well, our painter at our shop did that for us. You're right. It was expensive. Right. Still the paint and all this. Yeah, the paint and all the labor and everything for the decals and everything. Yeah. So it it was a pretty good expensive uh, amount of work that we had had done to it. So um, we just put four hundred fifty dollars of fuel in it before you got before you left on the trip, right? Is that yeah. what you told? Well, me? I, I tried to turn that into the insurance company, but they wouldn't buy it. But they did pay for the three hundred dollars worth of groceries that uh, my wife had just bought and stocked a refrigerator and, you know, the cabinets for the trip. Right. They did pay for that. Yeah. And they didn't de depreciate them like they did everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Insurance companies being what they yeah, are. Yeah. They're yeah. not going to give you 100% yeah. of yeah. it. Yeah. Everything is said, we're going to have to depreciate it. How old was this? Well, of course, the groceries were new, so they didn't depreciate it. But everything, yeah. everything else got depreciated. So uh, how long did it take you to get your final settlement from the insurance company? Oh, about a month. Month? Month. And then I come back. I didn't like some of the, uh, what they allowed me on my laptop. So I come, I called my adjuster back up and then he come back and sent me another six or seven hundred dollars. But, you know, on contents, I think, you know, buying clothes, just replacing the clothes we had was like six, seven thousand dollars for everybody. My, we had my laptop and an iPad and a few other items like that, but. You know, yeah. Uh, we still took a big hit on contents. Yeah, all the way around. Because you just can't remember everything you had. Yeah, and uh, I remember we were. I think uh, Leanne and I were up in Virginia at the time, and you sent a text message and said uh, our, to our RV has is a total loss. Yeah. And I remember reading that, and it scared the fooey out of me. And I said, "Oh man, he's had a wreck or something." And then I saw the video, the photos that came through about the fire. Yeah. And it almost brought tears to my eyes, and I know it's just devastating for you and Jan. Yeah, it, it was very depressing. It took a while to get over it. Right, yeah. and and now that Leanne and I are full timing in this, all of our stuff is in an RV, yeah. and um, that scares me now. I'm yeah. I'm more aware of it, and uh, we're making this video to share with anybody that watches it what uh, what you need to be aware of and the dangers. The p potential for fire. True, true. In, in an RV. So. One thing you never think about is you, like in ours, we never loaded up clothes. We always had complete sets of clothes in the motorhome. We had. So you had your own supply of clothes that yeah, you stayed in there all the time? Yeah, we had towels. We had everything, all kind of canned goods. Anything you'd want is already loaded. Boots, right. Right. shoes. Uh, it's just like you walk in your house. Yeah. You need anything you say. And, um, I keep sending uh, messages to Calvin and say, listen, hey, here's another RV because we want him to go to Alaska, him and Jan to go to Alaska. Well, they are gun shy now. They're not uh, <laughs> thinking about RVs anymore. They kind of got their fingers burned and kind well, of shy about it right now. Yeah, well, it's just been too soon. But anyway, hey, Calvin, thanks for uh, talking with You're me, welcome. sitting down with me. And I hate to bring up these uh, emotional issues uh, such um, after you know a few months have gone by but I think it's helpful to make this video yeah, this it, show. Like we would pay more attention to our insurance we all need to do that year we? after year we don't change our policy we just renew them and, uh, and when they call and say look I can save you a thousand dollars or 11 12 whatever it was you know oh sure yeah we're still, always happy to do that right yeah. It pays to check it. It pays to check it. You're right yeah. about that. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Appreciate it.